Hey everybody, it's KK's World, and today we're reviewing Sasuke 38, and oh boy, was this a fun one. Obviously, this video contains massive spoilers, so here's a warning to click off. Anyway, we have many top topics to discuss, so let's get started. Alright, planning. I really think the Sasuke crew did a good, did a great job, matter of fact, with the planning. The rain really wasn't much of a factor until stage 3, but they handled it pretty good, pointing tarps that were all the obstacles. They even took it one step further and put a tarp over the platform between the planet bridge and cliff-headed dimension. They also handled the circumstances of 2020 well, as they had a crew to clean the course. Overall, I have nothing bad to say about the planning, as they finally handled the rain like champions. Now we move on to another part of the tournament, the course changes. As you know, the wind slider was replaced with the silk slider in stage 1. On one hand, I enjoyed this change as it was suspenseful to watch competitors time their jumps correctly. On the other hand, it was hardly a challenge, with only less than half a dozen competitors failing it. Which is pretty bad compared to the wind slider. Although not a serious eliminator, it was... Decent to watch. I wouldn't call it good or bad. Um, I would have much rather preferred the silk slider. I mean, not the silk slider, the wind slider, my bad. But, yeah, it was just sort of weird. Another change was that the rolling log in stage 2 was working. In Sasuke 37, the rolling log didn't work due to the rain. Now that it was working, and combined with the only increased time limit of about 5 seconds... Stage 2 is much more deadlier than usual, but more, but more on that in the results. Finally, in Stage 3, the cliffhanger dimension was working, and it was quite the challenge, but also more on that in the results. Anyway, these changes brought to add to the tournament more than take away. However, the editing is when things get a little crazy. Like in 37, there were a lot of unnecessary and just weird cuts and fast forwards. The biggest example of this, by far, had to be Tatsuya Tata, who despite making the final stage last time, had both his stage 1 and 2 runs fast forwarded. Other examples of the fast forwards were Yoshinori Isa, one of the Black Tigers who made stage 3 last time, Shinsuke Nagasaki, Hitoshi Kano, Hitaru Yamamoto, and Naoyuki Araki. In Araki's case, both his Stage 1 and 2 runs were fast-forwarded. There were also competitors who got completely cut, like Akira Omori, a finalist in the very first three Sasuke tournaments, and Kota Sakuma, a Stage 1 veteran. Speaking of that, Stage 1, and especially the first half, was very strange. Just some weird editing decisions were made. However, there were other competitors who got their usual spotlight, like the All-Stars, Hikari Iwamoto, and Jun Sato. Overall, I'm not going to say that the editing of 38 is bad or good, but it's just sort of in the middle. Now for the biggest part of the tournament, the results. First of all, I want to say that the results of 38 were absolutely amazing. We've had some good results in this era, like 34, 36, and 37. But 38's results easily top all of those. We'll start with some of the highlights on Stage 1. First of all, we started the tournament off great, with Koji Saikawa, number 14, clearing. Additionally, we had both Black Tigers clearing again, each with over 10 seconds to spare. Ryo had another Stage 1 comeback, and so did Araki. The celebrities also brought a strong presence this time around, with the aforementioned Koji Saikawa clearing, as well as Hayate Kanjihara, Rin Sugeta, and Hikaru Iwamoto clearing for the first time in six tournaments. Not all the celebrities did well, though, with Ryoichi Sukata falling on the Dragon Glider, and Kenji Darvish failing there for the second straight tournament. Then there were the staples of the competition, like Masashi Hyoki and Jun Sato clearing. In Sato's case, he cleared with over 30 seconds left on the clock, and cleared for a record 10 straight time. Most importantly, though, Yusuke Morimoto got revenge on the warped wall and cleared Stage 1. However, not all the top competitors finished. The Dragon Glider was particularly interesting, with obstacle malfunctions once the Parabi came out, but we're not going to get into those. But anyway, it eliminated Shinsuke Nagasaki, Hitoshi Kano, and Ayana Oshima, as well as three of the four All-Stars, Shingo Yamamoto, 
Katsumi Yamada, and Makoto Nagano. The other all-star, Tasha Hirotakida, was disqualified in a controversial fashion on the fishbone kai for skipping the last step. If he wasn't disqualified, he would have cleared stage one. There were also a fair share of warped wall timeouts as well, such as Kota Sakama, Dice K. Matsuda, Yusuke Suzuki, and most notably, Tomohiro Kawaguchi, timing out there for the second consecutive tournament. In the end, we ended up with 14 clears out of 100 on stage one. On stage two, I was honestly not expecting the rolling log to make such a difference, but it proved me horribly wrong. So many competitors were dizzy from it and failed on the salmon ladder as a result like Ryo Matachi and Hikaru Iwamoto. Keitaro Yamamoto was the only competitor to actually fail the rolling log. There were also a fair share of timeouts as well, with top competitors like Masashi Hiyoki and Yuji Rishihara, both timing out on the wall lift in a heartbreaking fashion. With this, Stage 2 is much more deadly this time around, which I actually really liked. Stage 2 has been pretty easy this whole era, especially since Sasuke 35, so it was nice to see an unpredictable change. In total, only 5 out of 14 people cleared Stage 2. Yoshiyuki Yamamoto, Yoshinori Isa, Jun Sato, Tatsuya Tada, and Yusuke Morimoto. On Stage 3, there was rain, but that was finally taken care of by the tarps over all of the obstacles. Out of the 5 competitors taken on Stage 3, Yoshinori Isa failed the first obstacle, the flying bar, and 3 more were taken out by the working cliffhanger dimension. These three were Yoshiyuki Yamamoto, Jun Sato, and Sasuke 37 finalist Tatsuya Tada. However, we once again had a breakthrough, with number 100 Yusuke Morimoto clearing stage 3 for the third time this era. That would mean Yusuke would attempt the final stage in the rain. Going into the final stage, you could tell there was a lot of hype. Although he'd failed stage 4 twice before in Sasuke 35 and 36, Yusuke blew everyone away. Although he had trouble on the salmon lighter, Yusuke flew up the tower and achieved total victory with 2.52 seconds left. Yusuke became the second ever two-time champion in Sasuke history after Yuji Urushihara. What makes me even more excited is his age, with him already achieving two total victories before he turned 30. Overall, the results were nearly perfect, and I can't wait to see what Yusuke does in the future. Overall, Sasuke 38 was a great tournament, with great planning and results, as well as new and working obstacles, with some of them making an impact. Although a little shaky editing-wise, that goes right out the window when you look at the good. Overall, I easily give this tournament a 9 out of 10, or an excellent tournament, and I consider it right up there with the greatest of all time. Well, we're at the end of my Sasuke 38 review. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always... Stay happy and healthy.